Welcome to Draw This. Draw This is a series of videos where I'll randomly select a word and then draw it for you while describing my process so that you, the viewer, can follow along. So let's go ahead and get started. The random word that I get today is sunlight. So we'll go ahead and start our painting. For this piece, I'm going to use Corel Painter 2015. I'm going to create a new canvas. I'm going to use 18 by 24 inches at 150 DPI, but you can use any canvas size you want. Let's go ahead and just fill this canvas with a sky color using the fill command. We'll pick a blue color here, something like this light blue, and we'll click on fill. If you don't like the color that you get, you can always adjust it here in the color picker. Let's go with something more like this and go to OK. Next, let's create a new layer for the sun, and we'll make that a screen composite method. We'll go ahead and choose a lighter yellow color, something like this and we'll use the glow brush. Let's size our brush to slightly bigger than we want our sun to be and let's decide where we want it to be. You want to press down firmly and paint in a very tight circle to build up your sun. So we want something like this. You can make your brush bigger if you want your sun to be bigger. Make your brush smaller if you want your brush to be smaller. The bigger you make your brush, the longer you're going to have to paint here. And if you want to move it around, you can of course use the layer adjuster to move it. So I think we're going to go somewhere like right about here for our sun. Let's return to the canvas layer and now we know where we can start putting our shading for our sky because we want that to surround the sun. So let's go ahead and select the airbrush. Hold Alt on our keyboard to select that blue color. Let's make it a little bit darker. Then let's go ahead and vignette the edges around the sun here at the top to create the illusion of there being a bit of a glow. Let's sample that blue color again, and let's make it lighter. And let's add some light color towards the base of the canvas and surrounding the sun. I'll give it more of a glow. And if you want, you can go through and blend this with the diffuse blur to blend out any harsh pixelation or any brush strokes that are in there. The next thing that we'll do is we will add a layer below the sun, and we will call this Glow BG. That's short for background. This will be a screen composite method. We'll choose a kind of orange color like this, and we will use the glow brush. Now we want a pretty big glow brush for this. We just want to give it a little bit more glow, like so. See how now it really looks like it's the sun. It's not just a white spot in the sky. Let's add some rays to the sun. We'll create a new layer, and we will call this rays short. That will be a screen composite method as well. We can use the same color. We're going to use a particle brush that's called Flow Flare. We'll want to make our brush about as big as we can make it. Now you want to tap and just hold with your pen right in the center of the sun. So I'm just tapping and holding. Those particles are zipping about, making all those rays for me. And as long as I just hold there in one place, they'll start to build up. Now you have to be careful because if you're working on a really big canvas, this may end up slowing down your computer. So just beware. If you want to make sure that your rays are centered, you can change it from screen to default, or you could also try difference, and that will help you see where your rays are in relation to your sun, and you can line them up better. Switch it back to screen, and now you have those nice rays. Now let's create another layer of rays. We'll call this rays long, and we'll use that same flow flare brush. We'll set the composite method to screen, and you can't make your brush any bigger than it is at its maximum, so what you're going to have to do is just paint in the rays and then we'll free transform it to stretch them out. So do the same thing you did before. Tap in the center and hold to build up some rays. Just hold there for a while, they'll build up. And then we will use the free transform command. We'll hold Alt and Shift on the keyboard and we'll just scale these rays up as big as we want them. Commit to the transformation by clicking this check here. And again, if you want to set this to difference and then center this better, you can. Because I know it's kind of hard to get that lined up perfectly on the sun when you can't see it. Set it back to screen. You can turn down the opacity of those rays to make them a little more subtle. Like so. Now you have some nice sun rays. You can do that with the other layers as well for the rays short and the glow background. Now since we're going to have a lot of layers here, let's go ahead and just group these layers. So I held shift after clicking the sun and clicked on the glow background layer, which let me select them all together. I'm going to do control G to group them. We'll call this group sun. Let's click on this triangle here to open the group. 
and let's create a new layer and call it lens flare. Let's use the elliptical selection tool. We'll start drawing the circle and then hold shift and that'll lock it into place. And this will be a screen composite method and we can just go ahead and fill that with this orange color that we were using here. We'll do control D to deselect that selection. And now we can go ahead and move this wherever we want. Now we're gonna want these flare lines to all line up on the same axis. So what we'll do is we'll create a new layer and we'll call this a guide. And we will use the scratch board tool. We'll just pick a color that we can see like this red color. Let's switch to straight line drawing mode. And let's make a thinner diameter brush. We'll tap, we'll hold and we'll drag and we'll make sure that the line we drag intersects the sun down the center, like so. We could turn down the opacity of that layer so it doesn't stick out so much and then go back to the lens flare layer and use the layer adjuster to go ahead and line this up with the sun. Now if we hold alt on our keyboard and we drag, we're going to drag duplicates. So that's the easiest way to get a copy. So we'll go ahead and do that a few times here. And then with this end flare selected here, we'll go ahead and do control T or free transform. And if you hold shift and alt on your keyboard, you will scale this down from the center. Click the check to commit. Go to the next one, do the same thing. We'll just scale all of these down. We have something like that, we're looking good. We can go ahead and group these flares together. And let's duplicate this group by doing duplicate layer. We'll drag those over to the other side. Now we have a flare over there. Now let's go ahead and merge these two groups together by selecting them both and we'll do control E. You'll have to change it back to screen. We'll have to name it again. Now let's add some other shaped flares here. So we will go to the rectangular shape tool and we'll hold shift while we draw with that to get a perfect square. We will go to the shape selection tool and hold down on it and we will select the add point tool. Tap a point there on the side and then you wanna do one on the other side right across from it. So what we want is we want to align these with each other but we also want them to be centered between these two points. So that one actually looks okay. To get the one on the other side, we're gonna take the white arrow tool, tap to select that node, and then just use the arrow keys to nudge it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Let's go ahead and nudge this over to the left. I'm holding shift to nudge it in larger increments. Do the same thing with the one on the other side. Just do it by eye, or you can count how many nudges you move it. And then we want to convert these to sharp points, so we'll click on the convert point option here, and just tap on that point. Now we have a nice hexagon shape. Now if we want to modify that shape, we can go ahead and select the white arrow tool again, drag to select these three points, and we can scoot them into a more hexagonal shape. And then let's use the arrow adjuster to go ahead and move this into place. If we want to rotate it, we can do the free transform mode and it will ask us if we want to convert this into a default layer, which we do, that's okay. Select rotate, and we'll rotate it to where the point of this hexagon is following the line here. We'll commit to the change. Let's go ahead and change the color of this. We'll turn on preserve transparency and let's paint over it with this scratch board tool. We'll have to switch to freeform drawing mode. And let's turn off preserve transparency. We'll set the composite method to screen. And there you go. Now if you want to make this bigger or smaller, you can do so. I'm gonna go ahead and move it down here. I'm gonna hold Alt and drag some duplicates. All right, so I think that looks pretty good for the placement of all of these. Let's go ahead and group these hexagons together. We'll move them down next to the lens flare layer and we will group those layers together and we will use Control E to merge them. Let's change the composite method back to screen and we'll rename it Lens Flare. Now if you wanna change the color of these, you can do that. You can turn on Preserve Transparency and select some different colors and paint with the airbrush. And you can get some pretty interesting effects here. Now when you're finished coloring, you can go ahead and turn off Preserve Transparency. We can hide this guide layer because we don't need it anymore. And now we wanna go ahead and blur these. We'll select the Lens Flare layer and we'll use the Diffuse Blur to go ahead and blend over these. Use kind of light pressure with circular strokes to just fuzz them out a little bit, make them look hazy. The ones on the edges should be fuzzier. The ones closer to the sun should be a bit sharper. You can turn down the opacity of that layer if you like to make them a little more subtle. 
And I think that's starting to look like a nice lens flare for our sun. So now if you want, you can go ahead and add foreground objects to this. I'm not going to do that in this case, but I will show you what it would look like if you added some trees. Now you can have your objects be in front of the sun or behind the sun. If they're behind the sun, you'll get this nice effect where the sunlight and the lens flare kind of comes in front of your trees and tents them, or whatever object you have in your foreground. If you put your sun behind your foreground objects, you'll have a nice silhouetting effect where they block the light. So there you go, that's how you paint sunlight. If you enjoyed this episode of Draw This, take a quick second to like this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to click the subscribe button to see my new videos as they're released. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday for a new episode of Draw This.